You're listening to Photography, the online podcast to talk about photography news, tips, and more. So join me for my weekly show for your weekly dose of photography news and more with your host, Michael Burgess, for this week's episode of Photography. All right, come on, get the news over with. Thank you very much. Um, today we're joined by Dan Johnson and Marshall Foster. Dan Johnson can be found on Twitter at Rail Unrelated, and Marshall can be found at. Well, Marshall, I'll let you explain where you can be found. Um, well, a couple of uh, places. Uh, my Flickr is uh, Flickr dot com slash uh, Marshall Foster, or you can go to my website, which is mixedmartialarts.net, and Marshall spelled with uh, M A R S H A L L. So it's kind of a play on with my name. So, uh, and you can find all my information at uh, mixedmartialarts.net. Thank you for that. Now, we come on to our first news story of this week, which is metering and exposure introduction. Now, this article is, for, as you gather from the name, just basically explaining to you the metering and exposure introduction. It's basically telling you what it is and uh, what you need to know. So, uh, I th- uh, in my opinion, again, as we give every single week, it's a very good article to read because it gives you all that you need to know with some examples through picture. So. Um, I'm going to hand it over to Dan first, who can give you his views on this news. Yeah, I, I think a, a lot of people really, if they haven't been doing photography and until recently, with you know uh, the ubiquity of, of digital cameras everywhere, uh, they probably don't know a whole lot about how the metering works and and why you need to use it. Uh, you know, back in the days when everybody had a, a handheld light meter to check their shots, uh, it was a very different world. So it, it's it's a good good idea to to get a grasp of what's behind why the camera is doing some of these things. And then uh, now we pass it over to Marshall for his thoughts. Um, as far as I, I thought, the the article. Um, um, is uh, very well. I, I do different styles of shooting, um, and my metering kind of changes with different. Um, sometimes I'll do live bands um, at at night, which you know I'll use the um, sometimes the spot metering when I want it on a manual mode. When I want it to, there's a specific spot that I continue usually an artist's face. Or something that I need it to be specific on while metering, um, you know. And I'll, whereas if I'm during the day, if I'm shooting more of, um, you know, nature scenes or something like that, where it's not as um, important to me, you know, I'll, I'll change my um, metering up. But um, I, I thought the um, article was, um, you know, did real well as far as explaining metering and um, kind of determining what metering. Um, was right for each photographer and what they're shooting. So, um, you know, that's um, that's what I got out of it. I one one thing that struck me about that one thing from when I was reading, I didn't feel they actually went into is on the back of uh, some cameras. You get that um, metering system where it shows you how much um, light you've let in or how much color you've let in and. The one where it shows you if you should go more to the right or more to the left. And um, from my point of view, for most photos, um, you need to kind of go more to the right of what um, you're taking. Or or try and stay in the middle. But sometimes being in the middle is a bit of a, 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 a mess. Does anybody concur? Well, usually what I'll do in a situation like that because a lot of I, I shoot on a Canon 7D and for most of my stuff which is an older camera but you know this, the the metering that it does in there I haven't always been extremely happy with because a lot of times what I'll do is just keep it on spot and I will 
essentially go click on halfway down and find the the light source that I want it to meter to, which you can lock it, then lock it to, and then um, you know shoot from that aspect, um, you know, which I'm more confident in doing than sometimes with the the zone metering that at least my camera does. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, you know, I haven't I haven't used a camera, which I mean, only use a few that mainly Canon products. And I haven't been a hundred percent, you know, confident in the metering that it does, um, and shooting shots and getting shots done um, uh, effectively, at least with the, the lighting that I'm, I'm trying to get with each shot. Um, I don't know if Dan, if, if what's your opinions on on? Yeah, um, and I, I think that's a good point. I think one one of the things that, that's helpful is to go ahead and and take. Uh, a, a range of, of shots, uh, you know, if, if you're going to be out uh, taking shots in a certain area in a certain venue, uh, take a few shots that you would consider to be overexposed or underexposed to get an idea of how the metering is is relating to the photos that you want to mm-hmm. get. Mm-hmm. I agree. And it's like you know, if if it ends up that the ones that you underexposed look a little bit better to you keep that in mind that that the metering is is a little bit higher than what you want mm-hmm. fair enough okay. well okay. well with with metering though as well is it now i'm not a professional uh, but when what i've heard from others is that it's it's better to try and keep it on to one Sides, and most of them have told me you should try and keep it more right than you should middle or left. Is is that correct or? Um, well, that's you, that's in in the histogram when you're when you're going, uh, you're you're getting better highlights as long as you're not you know blowing out those highlights and getting the overexposure. Uh, that's that's what you really want to avoid unless uh, unless for artistic purposes you're going for that look. But uh, you know, if, if you can keep bright highlights in there, keep keep that histogram over to the right, without it bunching up over there, then you'd be okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, fair mm-hmm. enough. Um, now we're going to move on to our next news story, which is short films made with seven thousand five hundred iPhone images. Now this is literally a short film that's gone on to Vimeo which we put a link to on the website, mography.photography.wordpress.com. Now, a lot of the article is basically explaining to you what he took and what sizes, how many he took, and how the film works. So, uh, to me, I saw the film, and the film looks absolutely fantastic, and is something that, uh, after seeing it, I want to give a go give it a go myself but I want to do it in more of a sort of bigger picture with a proper camera now mm-hmm. um, does anybody else uh, have any opinions on that or agree with me or whatever yeah well I, I've, I've taken some time lapse kind of work myself but always from a stationary position never in motion, uh, like the photographer uh, Attila has done here, uh, and I have to say his his work is is pretty impressive. Uh, like uh, it's it's very eh, it's somewhat dark, but uh, it's it very revealing. I, I really enjoy it, and, and it kind of gives me an idea for some things to try on my own. Marshall, um, I actually um, I have. The, um, honor of uh, uh, viewing the video yet, so I can't really um, come up with an opinion on it. Um, as far as with stop motion film, um, there's I have been involved with um, um, a group online called Lomography, and it's uh, I highly recommend it to all these other photographers out there if you like shooting with analog film and um, kind of getting away from 
or you know, not necessarily getting away, but mixing analog film with digital. But they have done um, created a Lomo Kino, which essentially uses 35 millimeter film to do stop action 